Hi everyone! I would like to welcome you all to my first guide on this channel, this time from the How to Play IS-7 series, and in today's video I will show you how to play this tank on the Monastery map in a standard battle. We are already in the first battle, this time we have a draw with 9s and 8s and on this side of the map it heads to the right side, which is where most heavy tanks always go. You can see on the opposite side that we have tanks such as 60TP, 50TP, VK4502A and these m 3 Yoch. And I expect that these tanks will go to this side. That's why I decided to go here even though. As you can see on the minimap, a lot of tanks from my team was going to the left side. However, these are rather mediums and destroyers. But in my opinion, this is not a good site to do damage there, especially with a heavy tank. Well, because there are always a lot of destroyers there, now you can see that a few heavy tanks have also appeared there, or destroyers such as these T95. Well, it would be rather difficult to get there, especially since only Object 907 has moved further forward for now. And now I have taken a typical seat in Sector D2. I have a Škoda T56 with me. Other tanks are arriving. Well, I'm waiting here, I'm being targeted because very often it happens that some tanks pass by to the left side. That's why I was aiming here for so long. And after precise aiming, I managed to penetrate the lower plate of this Italian destroyer. Now, once again, being aimed at, I lean out just to take a shot at the 60TP and now I'm trying to find the break. Again, either the 60TP or the Italian destroyer you can see that another tank like the 50TP has arrived. Generally not many vehicles have come here, so it won't be a problem to play for so long. Now I managed to finish this TD and my plan was to get closer to the 60TP just to simply finish this site as quickly as possible, because about 3 minutes of the battle have passed, and the score is already 4-1, so this battle will probably be the one of faster ones. That's why I decided to take a little more risk, but before I did it, I make sure that my allies will definitely go with me, so I tell them that I need their help so that I can immediately come with support and finish the 60TP as soon as possible and maybe even this one in a moment, 50TP. I see that my Škoda 56 wanted to go first, but I'm having a lot of hit points, over 2.6 thousand. I decided to go first, because I can take more and my allies will feel more confident and will come with me to get these two tanks in a moment. As you can see, now I moved more forward. I take advantage of the opportunity and simply shoot at these two tanks one by one. Now I focused my attention on 50TP, because 60TP is already enough for one shot and I suspect that my T30 could finish it. And that's exactly what happened. Now I fire another shot at this 50TP and here I wanted to take a little break from this Tiger Mouse to this wreck. Unfortunately he managed to beat me with this 50TP. Fortunately, after aiming at his lower plate, I managed to finish it. We have ELC even in the back. Well, now I thought that maybe this T30 could handle it. So I decided to go towards the opposite base, because my Škoda 56 had already gone there. I don't think I will be able to fire a shot at the Waffen Traeger, because unfortunately my driver is injured. And it's noticeable that I am just driving slower but I'm still trying to move forward. I was hoping that maybe I would find a shot at this STB-1, which I know is tiled somehow by its hull and I can see its whole shape. After a few seconds of aiming, I managed to fire a shot at the side of the turret, and now he will probably run away so I probably won't have time to reload the second bullet. Here I tried to lean out somehow so as not to fall down the slope and maybe find some way to hit him. But unfortunately he had already gone so deep there 
that he was between the houses and unfortunately I couldn't find any way to hit him. However, now I saw that this EBR was in such a place that after leaning over the hill I could easily finish him. Managed to find a bit for a while and also managed to finish it for 300 damage. This is what the first battle I wanted to show you today looked like. I did 4.5 thousand damage and 2 frags in it. Victory 15 to 5 and managed to get a good result in such a short period of time. So this is what the first one looked like. And now let's move on to the next one. We are in the second battle. This time the draw is once again with 8s, 9s and 10s. And I'm on the opposite side of this map. And just like in the previous battle I'm also heading to the left side. Which is where most heavy tanks always go. Looking at the minimap, I noticed that many of my allies were moving to the center. I'm also trying to find some tanks that will help me on the left side. Because we've practically neglected the right side. Now, if we lose the left one, we will definitely lose this battle. So we need to spread out on each flank if we don't want this battle to end too quickly. Because we have already lost one tank. Coming here alone, I won't be able to do much. But seeing as I will get support from 60TP, which has just left the base, however, I decide to go here. I'm also coming from the top, not too far around, so that I can still find a bit on the tanks that are in the middle. As on this Yudas, for example. There was a bit visible. I thought I could capture it somehow. Well, for now, they are hidden behind the building. I lean out a bit too much. I risk going out like that and I could for example fall down somewhere so I rather give up shooting at the tanks that are in the middle. Because they might come here in a moment some heavy tanks were to be deployed for example the IS-4 was not yet visible nor was the Skoda T-56 or 2 gun tank. There is always a risk that these three tanks might simply attack me which is why I don't go any further because then I would practically die immediately. In this position I can also play nicely as a tower. I feel relatively safe and I still have tanks in my base that would help me if needed. Now I decide to go forward because my 60 TP from the team has already arrived. And I also see that the Skoda T56 is somewhere near the center of the map. So the only tanks that can go here are the 2 gun tank and the IS-4. As you can see I was right and I tried to make side scrape. He now bounced away from me, shooting at the bottom plate. Reaching this rock meant that the IS-4 didn't beat me. Not only I was moving all the time, I also had the hull completely hidden and at the angle in which he shot at me in my cheeks, there was a little chance that he would penetrate me at all. Now, although I showed a large part of the hull while doing side scrape, it hit the target and the shot hit the tracks. Luckily for me, I'm concentrating on this IS-4, I want to finish it first because the shareholder is not that good or at least he doesn't have such a good armor and now that I finished IS-4 with the help we can simply go and finish off this 2 gun heading towards the opposing base although the situation doesn't look very interesting just because tanks such as Object 277 and Scorpion G are already approaching my base I won't be able to play too aggressively here because we might have to return to my base sooner or later. Now, to my surprise, a TS-5 appears, which I didn't expect here. But seeing that he drove around us from behind, I decide to go for it. I also make sure that no tanks from the center are trying to shoot at me on the left side. Otherwise, I would have to stop a bit. But seeing that they are all occupied with my allies, I move forward towards this TS. I have a lot of hit points so I can afford to take it. Now, reducing the chance of penetrating me a second time, I move left and right. So that at least he doesn't penetrate me in a lower plate. Although, 
with hit bullets loaded is able to pierce me even in the cheek, but this lower plate is the biggest weak spot. This move gave me the confidence to attack it like that and I managed to finish it with 60 TP. And now it's still beating on the Škoda T56. What is important, as soon as I finish one tank, I immediately focus on how to do damage to another one. And that's why I am closest to the center of the map. There are a lot of tanks there, so as soon as I finish TS5, I immediately focus on the tanks that are closest to me. Well, I managed to find a match for this Škoda 56 and take another shot. The score is 8 to 8. Even though we lost the battle at the beginning, now we managed to even get it out. There were still some tanks left. I was standing here all the time. I was hoping that maybe this object 277 would move more forward or retreat and show at least a piece of the hull that I could penetrate. Well, unfortunately he will probably be there for a long time, so it would be worth ignoring him. But I waited for a while, hoping that maybe he would finally go somewhere. Now the important moment, the Škoda 56 appears instead. Now he will be turned sideways. I don't shot at him immediately when I see the middle of the hole, but when I see the back, so he won't give me the light bulb. Because if only a back part is visible, he won't be able to detect me after firing the shot. He knows that I am here, somewhere in the area where I was last visible. But the other opponents do not know. I didn't get a light bulb, so it was worth waiting a while longer. Because I shot him, now you can see that the Škoda 56 has finished off my ally in Iron Army. I didn't want to shoot him, I knew he would go up the hill. I decided to go ahead for this Judas. I stopped for a moment because I managed to find a target for this Škoda. I was waiting for the moment when I could shot him before he even drove up this mountain. After firing a shot, now I am driving forward. I wanted to finish this Judas. And here I managed to detect it, so I decided to go after it, because somewhere along the way I might find these two artilleries and finish them off. This is known that this always increases the chances of victory, the more tanks you simply run out of. I still have some hit points, so I can take one or two shots. I drove up from the right side of the stone so that the Judas wouldn't lean out again somehow cleverly and try to give me a light bulb and so that I wouldn't get hit by the artillery but to my surprise the artillery appears in front of me and shoots at me for 340 and now I'm taking part in this Judas I have to finish it as soon as possible so that it doesn't highlight me over this hill I know that two artillery pieces fired at me so now I can descend on this object 261 and finish him off I know that this M53 will reload soon, so I'm running away from here as quickly as possible. I do it a bit on purpose because I know that this Leopard will come after me. And he thinks that I'm running away somewhere along line 1. Stopping in this position where there is a slight slope, I also partially hide the lower plate here. And hiding behind this stone, I disappear from the light bulb. This Leopard thinks that I went away. So I outsmarted him a bit and decided to wait here. I thought I would finish it in the first shot, because I wasn't aiming at the mantlet certainly, so I should have easily penetrated it with APCR rounds. And now, after one failed attempt, I decided to take part in it to finish it as quickly as possible, seeing that there were few tanks left. The Škoda was a one shot away and I had absolutely no expectation that it would be shooting at me somewhere behind. I thought it would take her a little longer to get to me with object 277. 
Well, unfortunately I lost this battle, but there was a good chance to win it. I managed to do as much as 5.8 thousand damage. 4 frags, score 12 to 15. If Škoda had not finished me, then this battle could have turned out completely differently and would have been a chance to even win. This is what both battles I wanted to show you today looked like. I hope you liked them and got as much value from them as possible. Well, I hope that after this video you will know how to play IS-7 on the monastery in a standard battle on both sides of this map. If you have any suggestions for the next episodes you can write about them in the comments below and I will then record one of such videos at someone's request. If the video turned out to be useful, you can leave the thumbs up. And if you want to stay up to date with my next materials, you can also subscribe so you don't miss any of the next videos. So that's it for today's episode. So also, I say goodbye to you, see you soon.